confused and all. <laughs> yes, our bodies just started bouncing and moving. Well, good morning, E Church. Good morning. Yes. Good life. I am Amy Carson. I am here with the beautiful La Barbara, our pastor. We just thank God for you. We are your pre host here yes. at the. At the pre-show, live at the center pre-show. And we are live this morning yes. full of energy, full of joy, full of excitement and anticipation. Hopefully, you feel the same way. If Amen. not, hurry up, get a quick shot of espresso. But you know what's better than espresso? Some Holy Ghost infusion. Woo. We are going to lift up the name of Jesus Amen. today. You see, we just can't keep still. Yes. It's going to be a great day in the house Amen. of the Lord. Amen. So what's going on, Pastor? Um, Everything. A lot. <laughs> it has been a wonderful week. Very, very busy week. So much happening. It's um, personally speaking, just a very active, busy season of yes, life for me. Yes. Work has a lot. My responsibilities and territory have expanded exponentially. Yes, yes. Thank God for promotions. Woo! Um, you know, wedding coming up in oh just over God. two months. Oh my God. A new home. It's, it's a lot. Oh, I'm so excited. But by God's grace. Hey, awesome. He is so Woo! good. Like that scripture happens, the blessings coming so fast, it makes your head swell. Oh my God. God is just well that good. Deserving. That's what happened when you give your life to Christ and you serve the Lord. He's Amen. faithful. He faithful. is faithful. Oh my God. Now, what about your week? Oh my goodness. I had a beautiful, my week was beautiful, good. extremely busy. You yeah. know, I knew something was going on here and I, I couldn't make it, oh, but I thank God you. for live stream. Yes. yes. I was able to see someone live stream. So the e church, I hope you even live stream if you right. weren't here. Yes. But you know what? Ain't nothing like being in the house of the Lord. I, that I'm is I'm going to so tell true. you about that. We have live stream pastor, but yes. I'm telling you, you need to come in the house because I'm always in the house and I did live stream. It's good. It's good. But ain't nothing like being in the house of the Lord. If yes. you think that you can stay home and you can make it here, you need to get here. You need to get here. Amen. Try your best. Push, push, push. Yes. But what Amy was teasing at is our men's conference. Woo. We had an amazing men's conference last week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We weren't allowed Saturday. That was for men That's only. Right. <laughs> but Thursday and Friday was amazing. Oh. It was powerful. We had worship with Antoine Barnes and a word from retired NFL player Cedric Pierman on Thursday wow. night. Amen. Yes. Both of them ministered with passion. And on Friday night, we had a great lineup, a very diverse lineup. Yes. That's what I like. It was something for everybody. Everyone. I saw the Gregory brothers. They was in there. Yes. Way. Man, I was, at, I, got, I was like, hey. <laughs> yes, but everyone was lifting up the name of Jesus. Jesus. So to God be the glory. We believe men were empowered, men were encouraged, men yeah. were strengthened. I heard even through Sunday school that yesterday the breakfast was just amazing awesome. and that the guest speaker said something so powerfully, so powerful. He said, when I was in the world, I was bold about my sin in the uh -huh. world. So now that I'm in the kingdom of God, my I'm going to be bold about bold. the things of God. And that's why I'm bold. All right now. I know I'm bold. I, and I love it. Hey. I love every hey. bit of it. You know, I'm a, you know, just something real short. When I was out there and I used to love the, the dance yeah. at the club. Yeah. I, the, I felt like it didn't start till I got there. Right. So you think I'm gonna come into the house of the Lord and I'm exactly. gonna sit down and be quiet. Yes. I wasn't quiet back then. Yes. And God reversed that thing and now I make noise and I'm bold Look for the at Lord. It. Amen. That is awesome. And you come know on. what? It don't even take no music, but no. we kick off the party before the music yeah. even starts. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but I just All right. thank God for that. You know, we're celebrating today. Yes. Uh, Pastor, today is what? Palm Sunday. Sunday. Yes. And we have our palms here. We are going to wave them yes. and sing Hosanna, Hosanna to the King of Kings Hosanna. and the Lord of Lords. So if you're in the chat, we want you to like, share, and comment, that's and right. put your branches in there. Yes. Put your branches and, and share when, with that's us. That's right. That's when Jesus was coming into Jerusalem, yes. and they were so excited, yes. and they took the branches from the palm trees, yes. and they laid them down, and everybody shouted out, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed Can you imagine be the name being of there? the Lord. Oh, wow. Can you wow. imagine? But you know what? Wow. 
how we can even celebrate and commemorate that today yes. Yes. with the full knowledge of the week ahead of him and what he will ultimately do yes. for all of us. I yes. mean, it's powerful. Yes. It is so, so powerful. Yes. And even as we pray this morning on the prayer line, I encourage everyone to be even more reflective Collective of yes. what God, of what Jesus did yes. this yes. upcoming week. It's yes. nothing that we can take for granted. Nothing. You celebrate. Remember. Yes. A king, he died yes. for us. Yes, yes, yes. For but us. we are going to celebrate yes. the coming of our king today. And whenever we get together, we celebrate the yes, coming of our king. And that's He's why here. our hearts are so Filled yes. because it's all about God. Amen. All about Amen. Jesus. Amen. All right, so we have an exciting week coming up, as we just said. It's Holy Week. Yes. Listen, Jesus is the one man who changed the course of history yes. for the he entire world it. by what he did. No other person did that. By what he did this upcoming week, this yes. Passion Week, this Holy Week. We're going to be together for a special service on Wednesday, okay. a Holy Week Wednesday service. And then we're doing something a little different. We switch it up on Good Friday right. nearly every year here at New Life. There's no one tradition. So this year we're doing something that we haven't done before. Okay. We're having a service at noon, a All Good right. Friday noon service. Oh, my goodness. So if you're available, if you're off, or if you can take your lunch break during that time, make sure you're here wow. at 925 Briar Hill Road for our Good Friday service. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. You oh, know how you're going to miss it? Oh. Oh. Are you I'll FaceTime you. Okay. Okay. Will you be streaming? Do you know if it's going to be streaming? I don't know, but we'll find out when okay. On social media. All right. Okay, we'll yes. find out and put it on but social media. But if you media. can make it, please yes. come in. If you can, come on in. Uh, new life. Let's give it up. I know you're going to be here. Come on, let me hear you, need New life. All right. right. All right. And even here. if you're streaming, make sure you're here. We're going to have three pastors in the Lord's Church that are going to be ministering on the last three days of Jesus' wow. life. Going to take us through a journey of the last. I mean, we are really, really going oh in, God. just dissecting yes, Jesus' Lord. passion for each and every one of us. That's going to be Thousands good. of years before we were even here, oh my God. he did this for you, Amy. Oh, God. All right. He did it all right, for you. Pastor. Don't, for you. For I told all of us was in bold. the sanctuary. Come on now. I told you I was bold. <laughs> he did it for who? Me. And you. And you. Uh. And all of all you. Of oh, I'm already excited. Amen. So you want to be here on Good Friday? Ooh. We're not going to be any longer than 75 minutes. And then after, we're going to have light refreshments for everyone to enjoy. And you cannot forget uh -huh. next Sunday. Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> Resurrection Sunday, the most celebrated yes. day on the Christian My calendar. God. The most celebrated, the most meaningful holiday, yes. or may I say holy day. Holy day. Yes, holy day where Jesus rose from the grave. My God. He defeated death, hell, and the Ooh. grave and rose with all victory. And because of what he did, yes. we are here today. Yes, we we are redeemed. We live. He lives. Oh, listen. He lives. We getting too worked up. Okay. All okay. right. <laughs> so, all right. Let me let me bring it down a little bit. But I'm gonna bring it back up because that's <laughs> okay. not forget about this. Yes. That Sunday, uh -huh. after that, when they start talking on Friday, they're uh -huh. gonna be talking about Jesus. Yes. You know what? what? Our bishop gonna bring it home on that yes. Sunday. Yes, right? yes, yes, yes. So you need to be here in the place, okay? Right. We We're want to see your face in the place on Sunday. Yes, All we're right? going to pack the house out. And this is a great outreach tool. Yes. People tend to be more receptive to come to church on yes. Resurrection Easter Sunday right. than any other Sunday in the year. So bring them out, bring them out, bring, your bring friend, them out. Bring your cousin, bring your auntie, bring come your on enemies. In. And bring when everybody. You come, bring your thought to be expecting. Yes. Expect Yes. Amen. Now, me and Amy done hyped each yes, other yes. up. <laughs> but New Life Devotions yes. is about to take us higher. Yes. It's time for what, Amy? We're going live at the center. Let, Let it go. go.
was crying out, Oh Jesus, you be Hosanna. We cry Hosanna. For Lord, you're our healer. Lord, you're our protector. Lord, you're our way maker. Lord, you're our provider. Lord, you're our protection. Lord, you make a way out of nowhere. Make a way out of nowhere. You make a way out of nowhere. Made a way out of nowhere. Hosanna. In the highest, Hosanna, in the highest, Hosanna, in the highest, Hosanna, in the highest, we recognize your King, we recognize your King. We recognize your king. We recognize your king. We recognize your king. We recognize you're the king. We recognize you're the king. We recognize you're the king. We sing Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. 
Hosanna. Hosanna. We recognize you as King. 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 Nobody like him. 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 We recognize you as King. 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 The blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. I'm not sure if you all see on TV in England and the other countries that have monarchies, they treat their kings and queens as if they aren't even mortal humans. They give them such reverence and honor. But today we have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in our presence. Hallelujah. It's a line of that song that says, Let our King be lifted up. Hold it. Come on, say it like you mean it. Let our King be lifted up. Let our King. Let our King be lifted up. Come on, let's sing it. of the Most High God. So again, we say welcome to each and every one of you, and we encourage you to make yourselves feel comfortable and at home today. Amen? Amen. For those who are tuning in via Facebook and YouTube, and you are in need of prayer, you can call at any time. There, there's a number on the screen there right in front of you, and we have anointed and equipped prayer counselors standing by ready to pray. So don't hesitate to call in. New Life has pages on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. So if you use any of those platforms, please connect with us there. We have live stream, we have weekly encouragements, we have updates and news. So again, connect with us on social media. And if you're watching now, you can like, comment, and share throughout this morning's broadcast. Amen? Every Wednesday, we have our midweek recharge at 7 p.m., amen, and we encourage you to come on out for an extra boost to your week. Don't forget, each Sunday morning at 7 a.m., our face-to-face -face television broadcast is airing all over the region, which goes much further than Hampton Road. So you want to um, tune in, start your morning, and share with others, believers and unbelievers alike, are starting their morning with the Face to Face TV broadcast. We have Sunday school in person here in the sanctuary, classes for all different ages at 9.30 a.m. 
So join us Sunday mornings. And if you are a new member of New Life, you can join our new members class at 10 a.m. in the Life Center, where our new members learn more about the kingdom of God and the local church here at New Life. Amen. Amen. Well, as you all know, it is Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday to each and every one of you, where we celebrate Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Um, on Wednesday, now this is Holy Week, Passion Week, where we go through the journey of Jesus to the cross and his ultimate resurrection. So we're going to have a special service on Wednesday night for Holy Week. And for the first time, you may have heard it on the pre-show, we're going to have our service at noon on Good Friday. We're going to do something a little different. Good Friday at noon. So if you can arrange to be here, if you're off work, by all means, please definitely come out. Or if you could take your lunch hour during that time or could just finagle your way somehow to be here I encourage you to if you can't of course you can't but if you can be here you will want to be here we will have three pastors sharing on the last three days of Jesus's earthly life before he was crucified we're gonna go through the journey amen of this passion week and what was Jesus so passionate about he was passionate about fulfilling the assignment God had sent him to the earth to do. He was passionate about resurrecting us. I'm sorry, about redeeming us. He was passionate about his love for us. What passion? Do you have that much passion for anybody that you would go to the cross, you would be crucified and die for them? Be honest. Not quite, right? But he did that for us, even knowing how we would treat him. He did it for us. What great love he had for me that he would give his life. What great love, what great love, what great love. Do you all realize what great love he had for you and me? What great love. I don't know why this is hitting me right now, but what great love Jesus had for me that he would do that despite knowing what a knucklehead I would be. Going to be born over 2,000 years later, he was thinking of me and each one of you when he did it. Do you all realize that? Or are you just going to stare at me? Do you realize God's great love? I don't know anybody else who would do that for anyone let alone people who weren't even aware of his existence, but he did it for all of us. What great love Jesus had for us. So as you're going through this week, be reverent, thinking about over 2,000 years ago, Jesus' sacrifice, Jesus fulfilling why God sent him to the earth. Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. What great love. We thank God. All right. So good Friday. Good Friday. Good Friday. What great love. Listen. What great love. I, I can't shake it. We wouldn't even do that for our own children. Go through that kind of torture and pain. Jesus knew what he was going into. But he did it for us. What great love. And for that, we owe him everything. We owe him our lives. We owe him our worship. We owe him our hallelujah. We owe him our obedience. We owe him our service. Everything. Good Friday at noon and then Resurrection Sunday. He didn't just go down, but he got up. He got up. Okay, but we're not going to raise him yet. Y'all sit down. We're not going to raise them until next Sunday. <laughs> We're not going to raise them until next Sunday. But next Sunday, come with that same excitement and passion as we celebrate the resurrection of the King of Kings and celebrate that great love. Invite everyone to come out with you. 
Those, you know, people you don't even know say, come, come to New Life. We're going to have an awesome service. The Children's Chapel always has a lot of activities and give very big baskets, Easter baskets to our children. Adults, if you want to contribute to the candy and the toys the kids will be putting in their Easter baskets, by all means, all donations are appreciated. You can see Sister Angie Willoughby to make your donations. So bring everyone out. Um, most people, dress, especially in the quote-unquote black church, dress up for Easter. You don't have to. If you want to, by all means, do so no matter what you have on. Don't let that restrict anyone from coming to the house of the Lord. All right, now we're going to go to our confession of faith. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and we choose to speak what? All righty, so I am going to say the scripture, and then we are going to confess together. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith, according to Mark 11, 23. Let's confess together. I live the overcoming life. I have a sound mind. I walk in divine health and healing. I live a life of purpose and fulfillment. I am a blessing to the kingdom of God. I am walking worthy of the Lord in every area of my life. I have given the tithes of my increase, and I claim the winners of heaven blessings for my life. I have given... I will always have all sufficiency in all things as you are raising up others to use their power and and influence to help me. I have given for the support of the man and woman of God who teach me the word. They have sown into my life that which is spiritual. According to your word, I have sown into their lives that which is natural. Thank you, Father. I give the best. I live the best. I eat the best. I drive the best. And I go first class in life. I loose the angels, the ministering spirits, So that I may continue to finance the kingdom of God. I thank you for New Life Worship Center. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and other ministry gifts assigned to New Life always stand with the anointing of God on their lives and speak the word of God with clarity, accuracy, and boldness. I thank you, Father, that my family is blessed and protected by the blood of Jesus. No weapon formed against my family shall prosper. I thank you, Father, that I walk by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you believe it? We're going to receive Pastor Barbara. Praise the Lord. Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, then, uh, oh, blessed be the rock. Well, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, then, uh, oh, blessed be the rock. Well, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Oh, then. Rock. 
be the rock of my salvation. You know, certain times of year, certain holidays, especially Christmas holidays, or either certain services that we have in church, sometimes it just doesn't seem quite there to me until you sing certain songs. <laughs> I seem like every time we have communion, I always want to come out with, there is, fount there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein, and sinners plunge beneath their flood, lose all their guilt and stain. And when Palm Sunday always come around for years, it always, I always rise up in the morning singing, Hosanna, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Well, it's offering time in the house of the Lord this morning. We're excited because the Lord loves a happy and hilarious gift. We trust you're happy about this opportunity to bring your tithes and offering into the house of the Lord. This is his financial plan for us. No matter what you're going through. Come on, turn around. I want you to declare this to your neighbor. No matter what you're going through. Come on, tell them, no matter what you may be facing, obey God. Pay your time. It does not belong to you. It's been set up so you can get ahead. It's God's financial plan. Come on, tell them. For you and give your offering in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
Okay, we're not finished. One more time. Look at him and say, don't be a God robber. The word of God declares, will a man rob God? You're not stealing from him. You know when you, when you steal it from a person, they don't know you get it. Somebody break into your house. You know, I remember we were living in, we were living in Berkeley. Wow, I don't know why I'm going this way. I'm trying to hurry up because I want to hear the word. <laughs> I remember we were living in Berkeley. It's the first time this had ever happened to us when we were married. And somebody broke into our house. We were actually at church that night. Somebody broke into the house and stole some things. Of course, insurance took care of it all. But we didn't know that it went in there. But when somebody steals from you, you don't know they stole it. You know they did it. You may find out they did it, but you didn't know when they did, when they did it. But when they rob you. Ella Carson, they will walk right up to your face and rob you. They will hit you in the head and take what you have. The word says, will a man rob God? Don't be a God robber. You know what that means? That means you come into church on a sanctified day, on a holy day, on a day that he rose for you, on a Sunday morning and robbing God. Right to his face. You taking what belongs to him. What belongs to him, he doesn't need it. It's for you. It's for you to get ahead. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you, pre are you preparing yourselves? Are you preparing yourself? Those of you who are watching us by live stream, you can choose your way of giving. Also here in the house, choose your way of giving this morning by looking at and downloading that QR code. If you need an envelope and you're here in the house, you raise your hand and Usher will bring one right to you. Amen. A blessed 90, the bishop taught us years ago is better than a curse 100. I want a curse, and a curse I, I don't want a curse on my life. How about you? I want a blessing on my life. He will pour upon you the blessing that you have not room enough to receive. A blessing is continual. It keeps right on coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Well, I believe we are ready to give. And those of you who have tangible offerings, you can deposit your offerings on your envelopes and the container that will be at the doors at the end of service there will be a container there at the doors for you to deposit so just hold on to them and deposit them in the doors I, you know I hope nobody is forgetting to put the offering or whatever in there then when you get home say well I guess I just missed out this time uh -uh. <laughs> bring God's money to bring God's money to him <laughs> Bring God's money to him. Amen. That's the Lord. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come and to present our tithes and offerings unto you as you. Word says that you have opened up the windows of heaven for us. You have poured upon us blessings that we have not room enough to receive. You have rebuked the devourer for our sakes. As we give our offerings this morning, Father, we thank you. Because you called men to give unto us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, we give not grudgingly, nor on necessity, but we give cheerfully, knowing that you love such givers in Jesus' name. Now, everyone, with your tithe or offering uplifted, repeat after me. The seed that leaves my hand does not leave my life, but goes into my future to prepare for my arrival. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I am blessed when I come. I am blessed when I go. I am, according to God's word, a blessing. With God, all is well. In the end, and if all is not well, it is not the end. My God never ends on a negative. Amen. Amen. Let's reassemble our children in our children's chapel church at this time. And then we are going to have a video after the video. Let's all stand as we receive Bishop coming with the word of God on this Palm Sunday morning. 
if a war broke out and all the shelves were empty, I'll still be eating bread. The Lord might have to have a raven to come to our house, but I'll still be eating bread because I believe God. And it's according to your faith. Anybody else in here believe God? Hallelujah. He said he'll never leave me nor forsake me. He'll be with me in six trouble. And in the seventh, he won't forsake me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to what the Lord said. He says, let your heart be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For I have said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. I'm never going to worry about provision. I'm never going to worry about provision. When COVID-19 broke out in 2020, when everybody was rushing to the, to the store to buy toilet tissue, We still ate and we had toilet tissue. Father, we bless you on today. Thank you. We lift your praises high. Hosanna. Hosanna to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be exalted. You said that if these don't praise me, then the rocks will cry out. We decided not to let the rocks take our place. We holler out now, Hosanna. Blessed be he that comes in the name of the Lord. Bless your name, Lord Jesus. Have your way continually today, even as the word goes forth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You may see to be. Happy Palm Sunday, everybody. Uh, we trust that you are having a wonderful day so far. And to our online platforms, happy Palm Sunday to you also. Speaking of our online platforms, we'd like to give a shout out to Pastor Lovey Harris. Thank you, Pastor Lovey Harris, for being online with us. And to Sister Lisa Wilson. Sister Lisa Wilson, Sister Lisa Wilson's father recently passed, and I believe she's in Mount Vernon, but she's watching the live stream. Also, to Kim Jones. Bless you, Kim. So glad that you're on with us today as well. Let's give a shout out to Pastor Barbara on today. We're Appreciate Pastor Barbara. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's thank the Lord for our devotion team, for Elder Pope and Elder Jessica and New Life Devotion on today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for Minister Joshua, for Jeffrey. And we have our own our new, our new son on the drums, Jonathan. Jonathan Justice. Jonathan Justice. All right, Jonathan, I see you, man. Uh, uh, some time ago, his uncle, Joseph, used to be our drummer, Joe Justice, and now he's up there. We thank the Lord also for our medium. We thank the Lord, hallelujah, for our greeters. We thank the Lord for our ushers, hallelujah, camera crew. We thank the Lord for our children's chapel worker workers, and I meant to have them highlighted today, but you know, I skipped the Sunday last week, and it sort of threw me off, so I don't know all the names, and instead of sporadically calling the names, I'll wait to next time. But we thank the Lord for our Sunday school also. LD Yvette did a wonderful job this morning. Hallelujah. Our band ministry, we appreciate. Hallelujah. The Banks, uh, we appreciate them. Glory to God. Are you ready for the word of the Lord on today? Then Pastor LaBarbara blessed us last week with the word of God. The gates, the gates of revival. 
Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. And hasn't it been a wonderful men's uh, conference? <laughs> glory to God. Where's Elder Coach? Is he in the room? We give a shout out to Elder. There he is, Elder Coach. Stand up, Elder Coach. We give a shout out to him and the wonderful job that the brethren did. Uh, Deacon Michael Reese is uh, his assistant and Deacon Coffee and uh, Brother Warren Stevens and all of his team. We just thank the Lord. We had a wonderful time on yesterday with uh, our breakfast. The food was good both spiritually and naturally. Um, get your Bibles, your iPads, your iPhones, your Androids, your Samsungs, whatever device is containing the word of the Lord and lift it in the air. We're going to make what we call our affirmation of faith. Let's confess. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have, and I can do what it says I can do. Today I will receive the infallible, the incorruptible, the indestructible word of God. I boldly confess that my mind is alert, my ears are open, my heart receptive to these glorious truths. When I leave on today, I will not be the same because the word of God shall exalt me above every challenge that may come my way. I boldly confess that I have the victory and I walk in that victory. Let's bless the Lord for the victory. We do a lot of confessing around here because death and life are in the power of the tongue. So we speak life to our life. Amen. Go with me to Mark the 15th chapter. And while you're going there, uh, we'll have service on Wednesday night, and I'll mention that in my message. But on Friday morning, where Friday noon, we're doing something different. We've never done this before, I don't think. We're having a noonday, not as a church. We used to do it with other churches, but not as an individual church. We're having a noonday Good Friday service. Amen. Amen. And... Um, we have um, three of our alliances, pastors, to be speaking on the three last days of Jesus during the Passion Week. Uh, we thank the Lord for the last seven words of Jesus that's so dear to us and so meaningful. Uh, but we're going to do something different this time. We're having the last three days of Jesus. And if you're off that day, I know Elder Pope said he's taken off. He has to work, but he's taken off. And somebody else might want to take off too just to see the urgency of being here. Uh, and if you're already off, we want you to come and bring somebody with you. That's at 12 noon on May, on, on, I'm sorry, March, March the 29th. 12 noon on March the 29th. All right, we took a break from our year series, The Gospel of the Gates, to minister on financial stewardship. We believe that if you hear the word of God on any given subject, that you will be more prone to obey it because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we try to at least one month a year minister on giving because we don't do a lot of pulling and begging for money here. We just give you the opportunity and thank the Lord to respond favorably. So this being the start of Passion Week, for the next two weeks, we'll minister on the passion of Jesus and willing to die for us. In fact, this is message number two. Uh, Pastor Barbara already preaching that message number one when she was up here earlier. <laughs> and she did a wonderful job. Amen. Amen. We, I enjoyed that. Amen. She, she even uh, 
define for us what passion is about. Amen. It was just burning inside of her. So we are entitling this short three message series, Our Identity, Our Identity in Christ. So today, we're going to look at the three basics. One, the first of the three basics of Jesus giving his life for us, the dichotomy of it. We'll just share three. There are six, about six all together, and we'll share the six when we get into the message more deeply. But the, the three that stands out is his crucifixion, his burial, and his resurrection. So today, we're going to look at his crucifixion. And Wednesday night, we're going to look at his burial. And then on Sunday morning, Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, we're going to see him rise from the dead. Amen. Passion Week is the last week of Jesus' earthly walk. On December the 7th, 1941, the Japanese armed forces bombed the U.S. naval base in Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. We've had the opportunity to go there, and it's a spirit of grief on the grounds, if you're really sensitive, because some of our brave servicemen are still entombed in the ship that's there in Pearl Harbor. President Roosevelt delivered a radio address the next day that described the, the event as a day that will live in infamy. Webster's Dictionary describes infamy as disgrace, dishonor, great wickedness. Now, there is no one who will deny that what the Japanese did that day was an, ex, was an act of extremely great wickedness. In fact, it led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands of soldiers soldiers all over the South Pacific. I have heard that this assassination of President Kennedy, I have heard it described as the most infam infamous day in the United States history. I remember that day. I was small, a little, little child, but I remember that day. I remember my mom and my aunt just crying over it. Well, that may very well be so. However, I would like to take you back in time to a day 2,000 years ago that will forever stand as the most infamous day in the history of all humanity. On that day, the creature took steps to kill its creator. On that day, mankind raised its rebellious fist against the Almighty. On that day, the beloved Son of God became the Lamb slain from the foundations of the world. The day Jesus Christ was crucified is the most infamous day in the history of the world. Amen? And crucifixion was the way of Jesus' death. So our delivery today is subtitled, Crucified with Christ. Crucified with Christ. There were really four people crucified that day. The two thieves, Jesus, and you, and I. Crucified with Christ. That is those who've accepted what Jesus did. So before we get more deep into the message, can I share something light with you? All right, a lady shares... Soon after our last child left home for college, my husband was resting next to me on the couch with his head in my lap. I carefully removed his glasses. You know, honey, I said sweetly, without your glasses, you look like the same handsome young man I married. Her husband thought about that for a few moments, cleared his throat, and said, you know, honey, then he paused and said, without my glasses on, you still look pretty good to me too. <laughs> 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 
why it got to be without his glasses? All right, our message has two PowerPoints today. The first one is the process of crucifixion established. Do you have Mark, the 15th chapter? Okay, we're reading out of the King James Version, verses 21 through 28, as is our custom, read aloud with me together. Let's read. And they compel one Simon as Cyrenian who passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. And they bring him unto the place Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two thieves, the one on his right and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and the flower thereof falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Crucified with Christ. Before Jesus would be seated on the right hand of the Father, he would be crucified. Then die. Then be buried. Then be made alive. Then be resurrected. And then be seated on the right hand of the Father. The Bible teaches our our identification in all these steps. We'll just take you to one and then we'll just quote the rest. But in Galatians, the second chapter, you can see it on the screen, verse 20. Galatians, the second chapter, verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. We're going to come back to that passage later. But to start, you have to be crucified. Crucified. Then we died with him. Romans 6 and 8 says, Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Not only did we die with him, we were buried with him. Romans 6 and 4 says, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. And not only were we buried with him, but we were also made alive with him. Ephesians 2 and 5 says, even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. Hallelujah. Not only were we made alive with him, but we were raised together with him. Hallelujah. Ephesians 2 and 6 says, and hath raised us up together. And not only were we raised up together, this is the last of the dichotomy, we were seated with him. Ephesians 2 and 6 says, and made us sit together in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, crucified, died, buried, made alive, raised again, now seated. All of those steps Jesus took, we can find our identification in it. Thank you, Lord. They said that there are three things that cannot be talked about. Religion, sex, and politics. I think they are wrong. We do talk about those things. We just do a bad job when we talk about them. There is something that we do not like to talk about, and that is death. Yes, we acknowledge death when it happens, but for the most part, we do not talk about death with any real death or substance 
and certainly not with any enthusiasm, but the Christian can because death is not the end with us. You see, on the dichotomy that I just mentioned, I believe death was the second. But then there comes buried. Then there comes made alive. Then there comes raised. Then there comes seated in heavenly places. Death is not the end for the child of God. Hallelujah. But for the most part, people don't like to deal with death. They deny it, ignore it, avoid it. Because no one wants to die. But a teacher asked the children in her Sunday school class, if I sold my house and my car, had a big garage sale and gave all my money to the church, would I go to heaven? They answered, no. If I cleaned the church every day, mowed the yard, and kept everything neat and, neat and tidy, would I go to heaven? Again, the answer was, no. Well, she continued, then how can I get to heaven? In the back of the room, a five-year-old boy shouted out, you got to be dead. <laughs> That's how we're going to get to heaven. Everybody's talking about heaven, but nobody wants to do what it takes to go there. <laughs> you got to be dead. Before there can be a resurrection, there must be a crucifixion. And before... There is an exhortation. There must be a challenge. You heard the saying, and it's so true, no cross, no crown. If you want to be exalted, the Bible teaches this. You've got to first of all be abased. Before Joseph became the second in command of Egypt, look at what he went through. Before David became the king of Israel, just look at what he went through. Before Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were promoted, just look at what they've been through. Before Daniel, we could go on and on. The Bible teaches this. Before Job was given twice as much, just look at what he'd been through. So if you want a place of honor, if you want God to exalt you and promote you, be ready for the suffering first. But you can make it. I said you can make it. You can make it. Verse 27 again, and with him they crucified two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. The worst criminals were crucified in the middle. They crucified the worst the vilest offender in the middle. This is what they thought of our Lord. They thought him to be worse than a murderer. They thought him to be worse than a thief. So they put him in the middle, but he was the best of the best. Hallelujah. The most righteous of the righteous. Not long ago, there was a movie called The Last Emperor about a young child who was crowned the last emperor of China before they seated the throne. This young king lived a life of luxury and had thousands of servants. There was, in fact, a thousand eunuch servants who would do his bidding no matter what he wanted. He, he could call on them, he could ask for it, and they pampered him in quickly getting what he wanted. He was, to say the least, a small little child in charge of a country. On one occasion in the film, his brother came to him and said, what happens when you do something wrong? The little child king said, when I do something wrong, somebody else is punished. Then he gave a demonstration. 
he took a lovely jar and he smashed it on the floor. And then one of his servants was taken and beaten because of it. Now that's precisely the opposite of what happens in Christianity. In Christianity, in God's way of doing things, when his servants do wrong, the king is punished. We call that atonement. We get life for his death. We get rewards for all of the cruelty and the injustice that was done to him. We get the benefits while he gets the scourging, while he gets the lashes, while he gets to hang on a cross. That's what we mean when we tell people Jesus died on our behalf. We break the vase and he gets punished for it. For he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we're healed. He didn't break the vase. He didn't do anything wrong, but he gets the penalty for it. Mm. and we get the blessing he paid a debt he did not owe I owed a debt I could not pay I needed someone to take my sins away so now I sing a brand new song amazing grace Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay thank you Lord do we have anybody here glad about that Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He paid the debt. He paid the debt. Thank you. He left his mighty throne in glory to bring to us redemption story. Thank you. Thank you. Dying comes first to the extent we avoid death for Jesus' sake. We avoid life. Jesus said, for whomsoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. The more you live the crucified life, the more powerful will your life be. Hallelujah the more meaningful your life will be. The more impactful your life will be. Paul wrote, I die daily. He knew the significance. He said, oh, that I might know him in the fellowship of his suffering and in the power of of his resurrection. You see, there has to be some fellowship and suffering before there can be some power of the resurrection. Uh, if you want power, you got to deny yourself. Mm. Uh, if you want power, uh, power. You got to cut off the TV sometimes. If you want power, oh power, you got to get on your knees when you may not want to get on your knees. If you want power, you got to fast when you want to feast. If you want power, power. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you must learn to establish the word of God as the priority for your life because five standards will seek to guide your life. A is the philosophical standard. You're going to live your life by some philosophy. Philosophy simply is a belief system. You have a philosophy that you live by right now. For the Christian, it should be the philosophy of the rightly divided word of God. It may or may not be according to the word of God, but everybody has a belief 
system. Since we have made Jesus the Lord of our lives, our philosophy should be what the word of God says. And according to the word of God, we should be in the process of dying to live. Someone recently wrote that they believe in reincarnation. I don't because that's not what the Bible teaches. I'm not coming back as a monkey. I'm not going to come back as a dog. No. The Bible tells us that it's appointed unto man once to die. And after that, the judgment. I don't believe in reincarnation because the Bible doesn't teach reincarnation. So I'm not going to live my life expecting to come back as something else. Mm. And this, this might offend some people, but even some Christians' philosophy can be erred. If, if you believe that the Lord won't put no more on you than you can bear, that's a wrong philosophy. The Lord won't put none of it on you. It's not the Lord that's putting it on you. It's the devil that's putting it on you. If you think the Lord brought this to teach you a lesson, it's not the Lord bringing it to teach you a lesson. It's the devil bringing it to try to make you fall. You can be born again and have a wrong philosophy. Mm -hmm. Ah, the word of God tells us uh, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Can they put that on the screen? I, I want you to see that yourself. I, I know I'm putting them on the spot, but they're sharp. They're sharp. I want you to see that. We quote it so many times, but I want you to see this yourself. Now, don't get the New Testament confused with the Old Testament because there are many things that were done in the Old Testament that God doesn't move that way now. Because when Jesus came into the world, Luke tells us that the angels declared glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Jesus came and brought goodwill toward men. He changed the way God moves with mankind. But look at 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. There have no temptation taken you, but, such, but as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Now, leave that up there. It doesn't say anywhere that God is bringing the temptation. It says that he's trying to get you out of it. Now, God is not confused. He's not some sadist. He's not going to bring it and then try to get you out of it. That's playing games. God doesn't play games with us. No, the devil brings it because we live in a fallen world. And because God is so good, he always makes a way of escape. The devil can't bring anything our way that God hasn't already made a way that we can bear it. So it's not that he won't give us anything we can't bear. He won't allow us to have anything that we can't bear. It's not him giving it to us, but he will allow it because we're in a fallen world. This is why Paul says all scripture is given by, well, I won't quote the whole, but it says rightly dividing the word of truth. You've got to rightly divide it. 
if you couldn't wrongly divide it, he wouldn't say rightly divide it. You've got to know that God is a good God. I said God is a good God. He only wants the best for you. Hallelujah. He only wants blessings for you. This is why Jesus came. He clearly delineated why he came. John 10 and 10 says, For the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He doesn't come to make you strong. But Jesus said, I'm come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And we get strength from keeping his word. And even when the devil brings something our way, when God brings us out, we're stronger because of it. But the devil didn't bring it so you can get stronger. He brought it to either steal, kill, or destroy you. Mm. So, your philosophy of life must be according to the word of God, rightly divided. Or you'll live life in error. Be not only the philosophical standard, but also the personal standard. This is how you choose to see yourself. This ranges from the extremes of seeing yourself as a nobody to seeing yourself as the most important person in the world. <laughs> Both extremes are wrong. You are somebody because you are made in the image of God. He thought enough about you to birth you into the world, no matter what your circumstances are. If you were birthed in the world and placed on the doorstep of a fire station, God still loves you and has a plan for your life. Because you couldn't have been born except he gave you life. And I find out, I, I find in uh, praying and watching these things, those people who are born disadvantageously like that, they, they have such powerful angels looking out for them because God already sees them at a disadvantage. And so he wants to deal with them and bring them out. And if they would give their lives to the Lord, oh, what he could do for them. Hmm. So the Bible teaches, however, that if you belong to God, that is, if you're born again, you are a chosen generation. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him that has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You're the blessed and highly favored of God. You're impenetrable because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. I said you're impenetrable. I choose to believe what God says about me. A young couple rented a vacation cottage for a week. One afternoon, the husband looked out a window at the swimming pool and exclaim, let's change our clothes and go get some exercise. His wife, who was washing the dishes in the kitchen and looking out the window, watching some people play tennis, quickly agreed. While she dressed for a tennis match, he put on his swimming trunks. You see, the window a person look, chooses to look out at the world often determines the individual's perception of reality. I choose to look out of the windows of God's favor toward me. Hallelujah. A, the, philosoph the philosophical standard. 
B, the personal standard. Let's look at C, the people standard. Far too many people live their lives by the opinions of others. They buy things they can't afford and go places they don't want to go to impress people they don't like. <laughs> Can I say it again? They buy things they can't afford and go places they don't want to go to impress people they don't even like. Let God define you in your mind and through your actions. Understanding your identity in God starts with understanding who he is, what he says about himself, and what he says about you. Your identity can be defined by who God is making you to be in his image. Uh, I didn't know the time has gone by so quickly. Mm. Maybe we'll try to incorporate the rest of this on Wednesday night in dying with Christ. Somehow incorporate it all together. But can I share one more standard of the five? The first is A, the philosophical standard. B, the personal standard. C, the people standard. D, the possession standard. The possession standard. This is how you choose to deal with your possessions. This is when your possessions have priority over everything else. The story is told of the evacuation of the city of Pompeii, which was destroyed in A.D. 79 by an eruption of Mount Vesuvius. During the evacuation of the city, there was found a body embalmed by the ashes of the volcano. It was the body of a woman. Her feet were turned toward the city gate, but her face was turned backward towards something that lay just beyond her outstretched hands. The prize for which those frozen fingers were reaching out for was a bag of pearls. Although death was hard at her heels and life was beckoning her beyond the city gates, she could not shake off the lust for her pearls and the ashes consumed her. She had turned to pick them up with death as a result. Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. Don't be so consumed with material gain that you lose your life. External things may feel like solid foundations, but none of them are. None of them are permanent. Any of them could change without warning. If you base your identity on things like success, wealth, power, physical appearance, and so on, you are setting yourself up for a great disappointment. A sudden job loss could leave you questioning your choices in life. One piece of gossip aimed your way could destroy your whole reputation, even if it's untrue. Your appearance will change as you get older. God, however, never changes. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is reliable. He is unchangeable. If you find your identity in him, you will never be disappointed. You'll never be let down. Mm. Ah. Hallelujah. Just as we are identified with Adam in sin and condemnation, so are we now identified with Christ in righteousness and justification. I'm not. This is another wrong philosophy that Christians have. I'm not a sinner saved by grace. If you think 
that you are a sinner saved by grace, guess what you're going to do? Sin. And then repent. Because you feel like, after all, you're a sinner. As the man thinks in his heart, so is he. But if you know that that's not what the Bible says, how, how can you be a sinner and saved at the same time? You can't go to heaven and hell. You're going to go to one or the other. So you're either saved or you're a sinner. But you can't be a sinner saved. You were a sinner. But now you're saved. Now you're saved by grace. You are now the righteousness of God in Christ. You're a brand new creation in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're not a sinner anymore. You're a saint. You're a child of God. You don't have to wait till you be dead a hundred years before they declare sainthood to you. The moment you gave your life to Jesus, you became a saint. Saint Barbara. Saint Carl. Saint Maria, Saint Andrew, Saint Louise, Saint Phyllis, Saint LaBarbara, Saint Tracy. We are saints, saints of the Most High God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That doesn't mean you'll never make a mistake. That doesn't mean you'll never err. But in God's eyes, when he sees you, he sees Jesus. Glory to God. He sees the death of his son dying on the cross for you. When he looks at you, he sees Jesus being buried in the grave but coming alive again. When he sees you, he sees Jesus. I can't go to the, I can't get to the resurrection yet. We got to wait. We got to wait. We got to wait. Oh, but next week, glory to God. I said next week, we're going to see the culmination of all that Jesus did. And we're going to see where we are in the dichotomy. Hallelujah. Let's all stand on our feet and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Mm. Can, I, can, I, can, I tell, can I tell a story? Because it's so apropos to this. A heavily booked commercial flight out of Denver was canceled. It was canceled. And a single agent was rebooking a long line of inconvenienced travelers. Suddenly, an angry passenger pushed his way to the front and slapped his ticket on the counter. I have to be on this flight, and it has to be first class, he insisted. I'm sorry, the agent replied. I'll be happy to help you, but I have to take care of these folks first. The passenger was unimpressed. Do you have any idea who I am, he demanded in a voice loud enough for the passengers behind him to hear him. Without hesitating, the gate agent smiled and picked up the public address microphone. May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? She broadcast through the terminal. We have a passenger here at the gate who does not know who he is. who I am if anybody asks you who I am tell them for me I'm a child of the king I'm a child of the king hallelujah I know who I am I'm saved I'm sanctified yes I am I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, 
Oh, yes, I am. Speak with other tongues. Oh, yes, I do. Raising, giving authority in the earth. Commanding demons to come out. Healing the sick. Casting out demons. Glory to God. I know who I am. Do you know who you are? Hallelujah. I said, do you know who you are? Bless you, Lord Jesus. Bless you, Lord Jesus. We're all standing. Let's praise him for being crucified. Let's bless him for being crucified for us. He was crucified for us. Hallelujah. Some Palm Sundays, I preached on him riding in Jerusalem. Some Palm Sundays, I preached on the Last Supper. But this Palm Sunday, I want you to see the importance of crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Before we dismiss today, we want to give everyone an opportunity to make Jesus their Lord. If he's not already, then you can be saved today. If you are already born again, but you, you stepped away from the Lord, you're not walking with him the way you should, then you can come back to the Lord. And we are speaking to our online platform as well. And if you are already saved and you're walking with him and you want to be a part of this family, a family that's declaring the word of God, a family that's doing great things for Lord, that's making an impact in the earth. Hallelujah. Then you can become one of us today and we'll include you in all our prayers and there will be a special covering over you. Hallelujah. And again, we're speaking to our online platform also as well as in person. So with our heads bowed, eyes closed you don't know the Lord Jesus as your savior we're not going to make a spectacle of you we're, we're just going to see who's receiving him today who's coming back to him today and who's joining the church today hallelujah so Again, with heads bowed and eyes closed, we don't want anyone looking because this is a personal thing, even though we have to live it out before all. You want to make Jesus your Lord today, accepting him as your Savior. Just raise your hands where you are. Raise your hands where you are. And if you're coming back to him, okay, I, I see a hand. I see another hand, two hands. Yes, I see another hand. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Yes. Yes. Bless the Lord. See my, my cousin's hand. Glory to God. You don't know how that, that blesses me. Well, any hand blesses me. My godson's hand. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Anyone else? You coming back to Jesus or you're giving your life for the first time where you are you also live stream we thank you for watching us we believe that you are making this decision too let's let's conclude it in this prayer everybody's head still bowed pray this prayer with me say father forgive me of my sins I believe that Jesus came into the world born of a virgin suffered, bled, and died for me was buried put in a tomb rose again from the dead just like he said he would and is now seated on the right hand of the Father again forgive me Lord of all my sins I receive Jesus now as my Savior and Lord, in Jesus' name, 
Amen. Hallelujah. Can you put your hands together and bless the Lord? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Those of you who made that decision and others of you, I was told that there were certain ones who wanted me to pray, I believe. Well, before we uh, continue, let me say goodbye to our live stream. We want to see you again on Wednesday night, and we thank you for joining us today. You can check us out Wednesday night on Wednesday night recharge. And then after that, Easter Sunday morning. Easter Sunday morning, Sunday, Sunday morning. It starts with 10.50, our startup pre-show. Then at 11, our live at the center with Pastor Barbara and myself and this wonderful group of people. So until next time, come receive the word. Leave and experience the difference at New Life. Bless you.